what up b squad it is me jb and we are here today you guys with a brand new review for power book three raisin candy you guys this is season three episode number 10 you guys this episode was titled let's get to the title of this episode it was major look you guys and heh, did they ever make me look quite a few times in this episode i was like oh y'all got me y'all got my black ass but before we get into it if you guys are watching this video or any other video on the channel and you guys aren't subscribed yet then i need you guys to do me a solid favor and stop checking me out on this date and then having me pay for it at the end of it you guys know the routine you can do me that favor by liking the video subscribing to the channel and turning on your post notifications you guys and with that out of the way without further ado let's go ahead and jump into this episode of raisin canaan shall we all right you guys so this this season finale this review it's kind of going to be all over the place but i'm going to do my best to make it make sense you guys so i think where i want to start up with is with howard and then we'll work our way around and get to where we need to get to right you guys know in the last episode they were starting to piece what they thought were the puzzle pieces that howard and marvin knew each other right so we see howard he's sitting down with tanner and he's sitting down with the captain, Captain Batiste, right? And he has his union rep there. So they're asking him if he knows about, you know, asking him about Gerald. He's like, I don't even know who the hell that is, right? And so they're telling him that Gerald was the CI that was working the Marvin Thomas case. But Gerald overdosed, right? And so they're trying to connect the dots there. And I was like, that's not the dots y'all want to connect. Like that had nothing to do with Howard, unfortunately. And even with y'all trying, if y'all are trying to piece piece things together, y'all were, y'all had this man being a CI because of his drug history. And instead of getting the man rehab, y'all were looking at putting the man in jail and away from his daughter. So blame yourselves and not anybody else for the fuck up with that one. Now, back over to it so howard said that only thing that he did was he sounded the alarm on burke so captain batiste told him well james bingham told us that you implicated burke and you're the one that told him to go to iad right and then they said that you brought him um they brought up him putting out the word for lou you guys remember last week's episode when rock was looking for lou she went to howard for help remember howard put out the word that he was looking for him and those two cops found him and i was like i knew last week's episode i was like oh howard i think my friend that you putting that word out for lou might end up backfiring and hurting you but and it did it definitely backfired and hurt him so they talked they talked about that and he couldn't really come up with it he couldn't really come up with anything for that but captain batiste asked him okay Give me your gun and give me your shield. You are on limited duties. I was like, ooh, that mean they about to fire you, sir. You might want to go get word with the Lord. So then we see as the feds, they pulled up on Marvin and Marvin was at Gerald's funeral, right? And so the feds were talking to Marvin once basically telling Marvin that he's to blame for what happened to gerald and all that kind of stuff and i was like again y'all were using him y'all were using gerald but okay if that's what y'all want to say if that's what y'all want to say if that's what y'all want to say go for it right and marvin basically told him fuck you right later in the episode we also saw the feds as they went to go pay a visit to lou and lou is alive so Lou is in rehab, you guys, and we'll get to that a little bit later in the episode. But I was so thankful when we saw that in the beginning of the episode. But like I said, I'll get to it in a little bit. But the feds went to Lou and they're questioning Lou. They're asking Lou about, you know, if Marvin has any connection to Howard because they heard that Howard had put the word out to find him. He said, well, as you can see, he didn't find me. So me and my brother, we don't fuck with the cops, right? He also told him, like, you know, everything that's happened in my life the last six months, I don't remember it because I've been 
drowning my sorrows. So they also asked him, you know, a place like this costs a lot of money. How'd you get up in here? And they was, he was like, so y'all saying that I can't afford a place like this? Mm, yeah, pretty much. And so they're still talking about Crown. You know, he's still putting everything on Crown. But, you know, at this point, they don't, they not, they don't, they don't buy that. And until so y'all can prove something definitive, then what are we talking about here? Like, y'all got to skedaddle at this point. And that's what he told them. So then we see Howard, right? So Howard went to his place of worship to pray. And after that, we see him, went, he went over to Rock's place, right? So when he got over to Rock's place, he's telling her that at this point, the jig is up because they're putting two and two together and they'll be coming after him, her, and Canaan. She was like, you mean they're going to be coming after you, right? Because I ain't got nothing to do with this. I was like, damn, Raquel, I get where you're coming from. They're coming after you, sir, not me. And so he was like, you know, everything that I've done has been for you and the boy. No one's asked you to do it. Well, technically, yes, she has. I was about to lie and say no one's asked you to do it, but she has. But you have, you're an uh, able-bodied, a grown-ass grown, a grown -ass man, and you easily could have told Rock, the shit that you asking me to do, I'm not about to do it, right? But he didn't. So he once again wants to tell her to have Marvin take the fall for this. I was like, Howard, you keep saying this. This woman has told you, I don't know how many times she's not going to do that to her brother. And I was like, you are setting yourself up for failure, sir. So Howard, like I said, he's really trying to get Rock to flip on Marvin because at one point, Juke and uh, Marvin came over to the crib because something happened with Kanan, and we'll get into that in a little bit, right? And so they were talking, and Juke was like, you want to have this conversation with him here? She's like, he ain't nobody. I was like, damn. She just said, you ain't nobody, nigga. So they're telling, you know, Rock what happened with Kanan, and Rock is pissed right so now she wants to set up a you know extra note that's earlier in the review but we'll get there we'll get there in a little bit so let's pause here and move forward you guys all right you guys so we'll go back to the beginning of the episode like i said this review is going to be kind of all over the place because i want everything to go together cohesively now the episode we opened up and we saw lou so I was looking at Lou. I was like, is Lou in a casket? Please don't say my Lou is in a casket. But he wasn't in a casket because at one point I saw his eyes blink. I was like, oh, thank God he's alive. Or is this a dream sequence? But suffi suffice it to say, Lou is alive. He's in rehab. He's actually in a therapy session. And Rock is there. And the reason why Rock is there is because of the fact that he wants to talk to her because she is his person. And Rock, on the other hand, she... Rock's, Rock gives one of those, you know, you know how it is with us black people. Some of us don't believe in therapy, you know, and she's one of those people, right? She doesn't believe she has feelings. I'm like, girl, you absolutely got feelings. Like, bitch, you're pissed. Like, you are angry. And, and the doctor even called that out. And the more she kept talking, the more she was getting pissed off. I was like, Rock, that's an emotion. The thing with Rock is she is, she's tired of everyone blaming her for things that they do, Lou and Howard, right? Because she said it to Howard later in the episode. She said to Howard too, that, you know, all y'all want to do is tell me what, what I've done, that I'm at fault for this, but then y'all want to come to me and ask me for the answers to how to fix things, which it is true, right? So eventually Rock, the doctor and Lou were able to get through it to Rock. They had a conversation. So we see as Rock was getting ready to leave, right? And so she's talking to Lou She's asking Lou, like, hey, and like, how much longer do they say you have to be here, right? And he says, you know, maybe a few more weeks if, if they think, and it could be longer if they think I'm not ready, right? So Rock apologized to him for some of the, you know, for the things she's done and said to him. I'm like, you definitely owe him an apology. I own you, nigga. Like, when she told that nigga that last season, I own you, nigga. Like, I do believe Rock loves her family. I think Rock has a has a hard time with showing the emotions, right? She loves her family. She go up for her family. But I think she just, you know, being this queen pin, she has to play by the game and she has to be this hardcore, you know, hardcore bitch, right? So I think that's what that is. 
Um, that's what I feel. You guys can let me know what you think, right? So she said that she got mad because, you know, the, the thought of losing him. And I, I was like, that's understandable, right? Because we saw Lou over the last few episodes how Lou has been spiraling out of control. So I absolutely understood where Rock was coming from. I wasn't upset with Rock. So she's right to feel how she wants to feel. Now, we see Rock as she left the facility and she's heading home, right? So she pulled up and it's like a basketball, it's like a basketball court, right? And she's at the red light. And so she's looking out and then this car just pulls up beside her. It has all blacked out windows. And I was like, Rock, stay on, stay on, stay on your, um, you know, stay on guard because why would this random car with all black windows and then they just letting the windows down? So she, they let the windows down and she kind of looked over her shoulder and realized these niggas got guns and they said, they just blasted her car. I was like, fuck. But she hit the gas and she got out of there. So she was able to get away safely, right? I was like, fuck, 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 fuck. My God, that was scary to me. But she's safe, right? So we move over to Marvin. So Marvin went to the, his lawyer, right? And his lawyer is essentially telling him he hasn't gotten anything from the FBI. So as of right now, he, do, he feels like they don't have enough to build a case against him, which that is absolutely true. Because even Jukebox said that in last week's episode, like if y'all had something against my father, y'all wouldn't be talking to me. Y'all would be talking to my dad and not me, which is true, which is definitely true. Um, but what else? That was it. So we also see that Kanan and Crystal, you know, they still kicking it tough with each other. She told him she was late. And I was like, oh, shit. Like, y'all been smashing without a condom. Not a surprise, right? Not a surprise. Uh, but he's, she, at, at this point, she wants to know if they're going to go, you know, go, if they're in a relationship with each other. What is it? He told her he, he got a lot of shit that he's dealing with. And I was like, mm. he, girl, why would you want to be with him in this, this rat-infested looking apartment? But, hey, you know, who am I to judge, right? But let me know what you guys think, and I will pause here, and I want to move forward, you guys. All right, you guys, so we see Jukebox, and um, she met up with Aisha, right? So Aisha's like, you know, you've been calling, you know, I've been calling you for the last two weeks to check on you, and you ain't responded to me, but then you call me today, and you asked me to meet you, and I dropped everything so that I could meet you, right? So she asked Jukebox, are you okay? And Juke says, you know, she is, but um with the police they are just pushing up on her and her family and Aisha said that's not what I asked you right and so Juke said she should have she should have called her just to you know she she said she should have called Aisha right but she said she didn't know what to say and Aisha then kissed Juke I was like oh and Aisha you know Juke and I had the same question I was like girl weren't you just with her cousin Kanan and Aisha's whole thing is yes she was with Kanan but she was kind of confused. I guess Aisha's never been with the girl, so she was confused about her feelings for Jukebox, and that's understandable, right? She said she was scared about her feelings for her. So after that, we did see them as they went, I think, to a diner, and they were talking, and this is where Juke was letting Aisha know that she's in, going into the army, and Aisha's like, can't you get out of it? She's like, yeah. She's like, you know, when I was when we were in the group, she was kind of going back and forth with, do I go with the army or do I go with the group? But now that the group is no, nothing anymore, she's going to go with the army. And so Aisha was like, well, you know, I'll just wait for you. She's like, that's sweet of you to say, but it's not going to happen, right? And so after that, Juke is talking about the fact of her family, like she needs to get away because the shit with her family is going to continue to follow her as long as she's there. And I was like, Damn, it's interesting because, like I said before, plenty of times in the original Power, we know that Juke was a police officer, a crooked one at that. But I'm still kind of trying to figure out how do we get the crooked Juke from this Juke because this Juke is just as sweet as she can be. She'll fight you if she has to, but she's just a sweet girl. And I'm just like, how do we get there? How do we get there? Next up, you guys, we see Fame. 
So Fame went to go check on Kanan, and this is after Rock's car got blasted up, right? And, you know, Kanan, in that stupid-ass accent, came to the what you want, Fame. And he was like, I'm just coming to check on you. I'm okay. Don't I look okay? I was like, what the fuck, Kanan? This is your best friend. He's coming to check on you. But then Fame told him, like, yo, your mom's car got shot up. Like, she was involved in a drive-by. And he was like, wait, it was that nigga Ronnie. No shit, sure. Like, it was definitely Ronnie. So after that, we see the feds. Famous is at home. They go, Usher. Famous is at home, right? And he's at home, and boom, the feds just bust into the door and just arrest him. And they arrested him for Freddie's murder. I was like, ooh, <laughs> that's terrible. Now, we move over to Marvin and Rock, right? So, Rock is, so Marvin is telling Mar Rock, it was 100% without a doubt Ronnie that took the hit on you, right? And he says, because you cut off his supply. And she was, basically, she was like, no shit, Sherlock, right? So, Marvin told her, but he's working with Kanan. And I don't think that Kanan would do that. And Rock was like, you never know what people will do. And I was like, that is true. But I would want to believe that Kanan, well, the Kanan that we know, he would. The Kanan we all know from the original power, he absolutely would have gone after Rock, right? Because we know what he did. I mean, we remember what he did to Sean, him unliving his own child. So if he could do that to his own son, what would he do to his mother, the woman that gave birth to him, right? So at this point, Rock wants to have a sit down with everybody before, because she doesn't want this to turn into a war. She wants to get, she wants to nip it in the bud and have a conversation before we get to war. I was like, on paper, that sounds good, but we're dealing with the black Michael Myers. And I don't think he's not a reasonable person. I mean, we saw what we saw what he did to Neek. Like, I don't know if that's going to work, Rock, but if that's what you want to do, do it, right? So she sent Marvin to go have a meetup with Snaps and Pop, right? And we'll talk about that in a little bit too, right? So next up, you guys, we get Jukebox. So Juke and Kanan, you know, they're walking down the street, and this is where Juke is telling Kanan that, you know, she is going to be going to the Army. And he's like, is that what you want to do, Juke? And she was like, yeah. And so he's like, you know, I'm, I'm going to be buried hurt on the south side. Well, you went wrong about that, nigga, because you definitely are buried somewhere near the south side, right? You're definitely there. So, hell, so is she, <laughs> unfortunately, right? So he did tell her that he had nothing to do with what happened to Rock. I was like, Rock? Ain't that your mama, nigga? And then he said, it was Ronnie. And so while they're talking, a van pulled up and a, ga and a gang of niggas hopped out with, you know, the guns pointed at Juke and Kanan. And they, they took Kanan and put Kanan in the back of the truck. And they, they scurried off, right? And back over to fame. The reason why Fame got his dumb ass arrested is <clears throat> after stealing that gun from, you know, well, technically that was his apartment, but from Kanan's apartment, right? So his mama found a gun. She turned the gun in. They did a ballistic report on the gun. And this is the same gun that took Freddie out. I was like, Fame, you have got to be the stupidest motherfucker. Why would you keep that gun? Why not get rid of it? But that was Kanan's gun, wasn't it? So that's how they got him. So he wants to have a lawyer, but they want to make a deal with him. And let's pause here, you guys, and move forward and wrap up the episode, I think. All right, you guys, so we're going to move <clears throat> right back over to Lou real quick. So Lou is a down on himself because he's having a conversation with his doctor, right? Then we see this man, and oh my gosh, you guys, Lou went to the utility closet and got an extension cord. I was like, Lou, what are you about to do with this extension cord? Lou said, I'm about to do what you think I'm about to do. I said, please don't. And I knew when I saw the extension cord, I knew what it was because they gave a they gave a, a warning at the beginning of the episode about unaliving themselves and attempt to. I was like, Lou, Lou, Lou. Lou done had that extension cord wrapped around the doorknob. <clears throat> He had it intricately wrapped around his neck. I was like, Lou, please don't do what I think you're going to do, Lou. Don't do it. it, it it's okay, Lou. You're, you're in rehab. You're fine. Let's not do this. Let's not, let's not make any rash decisions, Lou. Like, please, let's not do that. 
But he looked in the mirror and he he he, he made a second chance. And he took it off. I was like, thank God. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Right now, the captain, Captain Batiste, him and Tanner went down to talk to fame and his mama. Right. What they want is they want <clears throat> for fame to work with them to bring down Howard because they know like, I mean, when, now that I, I hadn't thought about it in previous episodes, but now that they're saying it out loud, I hadn't even forgot that Howard is the one that helped with the fame stuff, right? I forgot all about that. And because uh, there was no police report filed or nothing. And fame is like, so they want fame to basically drop a dime on Howard. I was like, oh, okay. So that's where we're going. <laughs> that's where we're going. Cool. Didn't see that one coming. Now, moving over to Pop and Snaps, right? So we see as Marvin went to go talk to Snaps and Pop, right? And he's basically telling them, like, you know, Rock don't want a whole war and she wants it to be just cool, you know. And they were like, you know, that ain't got nothing to do with us. And they, they also don't believe that Rock or the black Michael Myers are gonna go, gonna go for a truce because they're both hotheads. I was like, Rock possibly could go for a truce. The black Michael Myers, that fool ain't going for no truce, right? I don't see him going for a truce. I don't see him going for a truce, but I definitely can see Rock doing it, right? And once again, Pop, she always flirting with somebody because she was flirting like hell with um, Marvin, right? So after that, you know, we did also see Snaps and Pop as they were going off on Ronnie about that hit on Rock and how it went wrong. And he was like, I didn't do it. And they were like, that's the problem, motherfucker. You didn't take the shot at her. Somebody else did it, and they still fucked it up, right? So Kanan came in there pissed off on Ronnie, talking about, you weren't supposed to go off with my family. We partners. You supposed to talk to me. I was like, he's like, I don't, you don't tell me what to do, little nigga. He said, you don't tell me shit to do, nigga. I was like, hmm, this would be an interesting fight. I would hope Kanan would whip your ass. Like, as much as we couldn't stand Kanan in power, and probably can't stand him here, I damn sure can't stand the black Michael Myers, right? So after that, we see as, you know, this is moving back over to Rock when they were talking to Juke and uh, Marvin. So she knows that they have Kanan, right? And <clears throat> she was going to go meet up with Pop and Snaps. And Howard said he was going to go with them. And she was like, no, you don't need to go. He said it involves the kids, so he's going. So we see as Pop, Snaps, um, Rock, Marvin, and Howard, they're all together. So Rock wants to know what it is that, you know, the black Michael Myers wants. So they told her that they want, he wants her business and her connects, as well as five. I was like, five what? Five, five hundred dollars? Five million dollars. What is this five? Nope. He wants five hundred thousand dollars. I was like, oh, he wants five hundred thousand dollars. And so they're leaving. And, you know, Marvin asked Rock, like, do you have that? She says, I do, but it's not liquid. So we then see her as she went to go talk to um, Stefano. She's asking Stefano for the money. Right. And Stefano, he was he was a little iffy at first, but he he gave her the money. Right. And. Also, when Rock was still, when they left that meeting with Pop and Snaps, she told Howard, like, this is where, this is where things end with us right here, right now, right? He was like, nah, when you, he was like, nah, when you get ready to do the drop, he's going to be there with her. I was like, oh, are those your famous last words, sir? Because they might be your famous last words. I just, mm, mm, mm. But yeah, he wanted to be there when um, they do the drop. I was like, good luck with that one, sir. Good luck with that. <laughs> oh, you guys, this episode, when I tell you guys, this was a pretty, like I said, it was a pretty good episode. Pretty, pretty good episode. So after that, like I said, she got the $500,000, right? And we saw her as they went to go to this drop. And so... It was interesting because when, when they did the drop, 
I was kind of confused. This is this is why when I said earlier in the, in the episode, major look, bitch, they definitely made me look in this episode because I was so confused. I was like, what am I watching here? Like, what is going on? What is going on here? So we we get to the drop right, and you know, Rock and Howard went in there, and when they went in there. The guys, they searched them, make sure they had no guns on them, and they let them in. So they go in there where Ronnie is. Ronnie got a gun pointed at them, and he was saying to Howard, I wouldn't have let a cop, I would not have let a cop in here, but the kid told me who you are to him. I was like, so Kana told you that that's his, like, if Ronnie makes it out of this alive, he can run that back to Snaps and Pop. But okay, Kanan, why would you do that? I was so confused, right? So after that, Rock has the money, right? She has it in a big, huge duffel bag, and she gives him the duffel bag. And, you know, Ronnie was like, my whole thing was, I just want your business in the connects. It was your kid over here, because he was, she was like, give me my son back, Ronnie. He was like, that ain't, he ain't mine to give. I was like, he ain't yours to give, but you're holding him hostage. So he thought, so we thought at that time, right? He said, I just want your business in the connects. The kid wanted the money. I was like, I know you fucking lying. But again, remember, like I just said a few minutes earlier in the review, that the Canaan that we knew from the original power is ruthless, right? He he took out Sean, his own son. So that's not a shock to us, right? So I was like, I was like, God damn, is he finna hurt his mama? Hurt your daddy. We don't care about you. Your daddy is expendable. Your mama, we need her. We love your mama. We love your mama. You know, it's not your daddy, it's not your pops, it's not your pops, right? So Ronnie is bent down in the bag looking at the money, and Kanan is behind him, and he just pop. I was like, yes, 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 yes. I was just so happy when he, he when Ronnie got popped. I was like, yes, about damn time. I was so nervous. Oh, ice spice. Sorry, you guys. I'm looking. So, you guys know the, the Super Bowl is about to start in about an hour, right? I'm, and I saw Jay Z, Blue Ivy, and I think that was Rumi. But yeah, um, getting all off track, right? But yeah, I was like, I was like, thank God, because I really was thinking that we were going to have to go into season four of Ronnie. I was like, I don't want to do another season of Ronnie. I really, truly don't. I don't want to do another season of Ronnie. So we're not gonna do another season of Ronnie. Ronnie is deceased thank you jesus right so then rock took ronnie's gun and she put it she pointed it at um howard i was like howard you dumb fool because you don't said this because actually i forgot to mention something so when they left that meeting with snaps and pops on top of him saying that he was going to go with her to the drop he's also talking about there has to be sacrifices and he's talking about the sacrifice is her brother I was like, you are a dumb fool. Baby, them kids, you can't tell that them kids got any bit of black in them anywhere. Mm, mm, mm. <laughs> yeah, never mind. Getting off track again. But um, what were we talking what was I talking about? What was I talking about? Was, oh, so Rock had the gun pointed on uh, Howard, right? I was like, you've done this to yourself. You mentioned to her now three different times to flip on her brother. She would rather, she's going to flip on you before she flips on her family, right? Even though you keep talking about y'all a family, y'all really ain't family. The only thing that y'all got in common, only familiar ties y'all have is the fact that y'all are Canaan's parents. That is it. That is all, right? So after that, he's like, see, look how your mother doing me. And Rock said, boom. I was like, well, damn. I didn't see that one coming. Kind of did, but kind of didn't. I was like, well, you know, it is what it is. And Canaan was just sitting there looking at her like, I can't believe you did that. I was like, I can't believe she did that. And I'm glad she did that, right? So sorry to you, Howard. You definitely helped out in a clutch. But um, like I said, you were expendable. You definitely were expendable, sir. And you guys, Rock, Kanan, and Marvin, they left. And then, you guys, at the end of the episode, we see some shoes and some, some black shoes and some pants walk in there. I was like, who is this? And they panned that camera up, and it was unique. <laughs> unique is alive, you guys. 
Unique is alive. I knew Neek was alive. I knew Neek one did. I knew Neek was alive. I knew it. 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 Yes, I'm so happy to see. I was so happy to see Neek, you guys. I raised up off my because I was sitting on the couch. I was like Neek. Oh my God, it was such a good episode, you guys. I enjoyed it, right? I definitely enjoyed it. Please, you guys, let me know what you guys thought about this season finale of Raising Canaan. So, oh, um. I know, like I said, that um, BMF, they return March the 1st. I'm not, I'm going to watch season one and two. I'm not entirely sold on doing reviews of BMF, but if I do, you'll see them. If I don't, then I'll see you guys when book two comes back, you guys. I am so excited for book two. But that is it, you guys. Let me know what you guys thought about this episode down in the comment section below. Subscribe to the channel, you guys. Turn on your post notifications and share the video, you guys. And until next time, stay safe. Take care of yourselves, you guys. Wash your hands. Be blessed. And I'll see you guys for the next one. I, again, I don't know if that'll be... I'm Like I said, I'm going to look at BMF, you guys. If I can get into BMF, then we'll come back on the first for BMF. If not, then it'll just be whenever uh, Ghost returns, you guys. But I'll see you guys then.